So then I said to the guy, that's not my chicken. Uh, you got that joke, right? You got it? Oh. <laughs> sure. No, to be honest, I actually didn't. Oh. Well, anyway, we're here. Welcome yeah. to OC Fan TV. OC, yeah, OC Fan TV, the Scuff Podcast. I just forgot to start recording. Uh, Logan side of things. So we got that on our camera, which is going to be embarrassing. Um, yeah. It's not going to make the, the post pod post pod cut it bloopers. might honestly just make the normal pod to be honest with you um but yeah we were i was just asking for your thoughts on last night's match you said uh, we had a little bit of time to decompress so if you want to continue that thought you go for it yeah time to decompress in ilf we call it the summertime sadness of course because every summer it's the same thing every year you can put it on the calendar it's you know it's going to happen um and the performances are just not there. I don't know what's going on with the defense. Like on paper, like, oh, we scored three. That's good. We don't usually score three. But then we also shipped five, which makes no sense. Down 2 nil in the seventh minute. It's just, what, what's there to say? Yeah, anytime you score three goals at home, you're like, all right, yeah, we definitely won that game. If that's all you knew about that game, you're like, yeah, we won. Worst team in the league. And then you go and actually look at the score line and you're like, oh, yeah. Orlando City, as you said, summertime sadness. It's just dead, the worst thing imaginable. Yeah, it just makes no sense. You got thoughts? Every time I ask you, you're kind of like, mm, so I wasn't ready for that, but you're on a podcast, so you better be ready. Touche. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, it just sucks. Uh, last night was our season high with a uh, three-goal tally. Goals by Facundo, Cara, and who was the third? Let's see if you know. I don't think I was in the – oh, I was in the stadium. I forgot, if I'm being honest. Facundo, it was Facundo. Facundo scored the first, then Cara had a header. I, don't off know, of, I, was, I think it was off the free kick, I'm and then I'm forget. I'm blanking on the third, but this is how right, bad the podcast up, goes. The yeah, to put up three against DC. I mean, that's you, we kind of ex- oh yeah, you the put it top left. Yeah, you expect us to put three past DC, but you obviously don't expect to concede five at home against and two in the first Absolutely. eight minutes. Yeah, so it's it kind of came as a shock, but. As you said, summertime sadness. These things tend to happen with us. So I mean, all I guess all we can do is move on and hope for the best. You got- I mean, hope for the best. But the tra- I mean, the transfer window is about to open, and it looks like Zhao Matinho might be on the way out. Mm-hmm. Um, what's there to replace him? Obviously, Kyle Smith was caught out last night. Ruan couldn't cross at all. Mm-hmm. You know, it just he nothing was clicking. So. Do you think mid transfer is when the Wilfs begin to open the pocketbook, or are we just gonna coast until whenever? I guess this is this is when we find out if they're truly invested. Like we, you could say they're truly invested because they put in the money to bring Facundo here, um, mm-hmm. but I think bringing him in and then they were planning on bringing Gaston in. I think they were like, all right, we've done enough to make this team what it needs to be for this year. Um, Facundo has, I mean, he's a great player, but has statistically he hasn't brought the goals and assists that we thought he would uh, immediately. Right. Gaston being hurt. Now you see uh, Joao maybe on his way out with teams across Europe interested. Um, apparently we're interested in some 33-year-old attacking mid down from uh, either the Colombian League or the Mexican League. But Sick. Yeah. <laughs> another, yeah. So we got a 32-year-old Cam and a 33-year-old Cam. That's fantastic. Um, but it's them. Are they willing to put in even more money when they were probably not expecting to have to spend in the summer window? So that's a question that's going to have to be asked, and we will find out very yeah. soon. I mean, I hope so, because that's the thing is you can have DPs. DPs are cool, but it's the squad players that are going to keep you at that line. You know, you can have DPs that are way up here, but if the rest of your squad is just, you know, scrubs, what can you really expect to put together if you're not expecting to just be a open cup team where you just win, you know, these one-off games? You know, leagues are hard to win, and obviously I want MLS Cup, but I would love the Supporter Shield. I'd love to just absolutely say from start to finish we were the top team, but I don't know if the investment is in this current squad, and I have to hope that it's coming. Yeah, you can definitely say that. I mean, in the midfield... Are, like the depth in the midfield is is inconsistent to say the least. You have Junior so missing open chances left and right throughout the season. Yeah. He was our top scorer at one point. 
And then he just said, all right, we're not going to do anything in the attacking third. Um, Caro has started to score goals. That's good to see. He's obviously, like I say it all the time, he's a better player in the box than he is anywhere else on the pitch. Um, Mauricio's been our only guy. Like if, we, if Mauricio's not on the field, we don't have an attack. That's just how it goes. Um, not having a guy that can somewhat replicate that definitely hurts us. So you already have kind of three positions right there not even not even touching the defense that you can say yeah we definitely need more depth right there um pato's been off his game since the beginning of the season i would say mm-hmm. so it's just a, a mix of inconsistencies and not a lot of depth which is kind of the total opposite of what we were saying at the beginning of the season it's crazy to see the two comparisons from the first well, three games it's it's, it's- yeah, it's nice when you go through preseason, you're like, oh, well, the team will grow. We have a lot of depth, a lot of depth. But then when you look at your bench and all you have are out-of-form players, no matter how many games you give them, they just never seem to find the form. I mean, what can happen? So let me ask you guys this. How much longer does Oscar stay in the position? Yeah, that's, that's a question I'm going to let you answer first. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's fair. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know. Based on the recent run of games, he's on the hot seat for sure. I don't know how long the Wills would be or whoever else is willing to put up with kind of like mediocrity at this point. Yes, we've done well under Oscar, but I'm not sure if he'll be able to take us to the to the top. So, I, honestly, I'm not sure how long he'll stay in. I think if we drop two or three in the next five games, I think he'll probably be on the way out. Two or three in the next five? Are you just saying that league games or, like, Open Cup games and league games mix? I think league games. So, even if we get knocked out I mean, of the Open Cup. This next stretch is difficult. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, you yeah, got Miami, then you saw the Open Cup game. If you get knocked out of the Open Cup in the semifinal, I, we're at that point in the season – it's kind of, well. We're six in the playoff race. We're we're dropping yeah. points, so we shouldn't be dropping. If we get knocked out in the semifinal after making it this far, the season's basically open cup or bust. Is if we keep dropping points in the league, we may not even make the playoffs, or we'll be a six or seven seed, and we'll be fighting a top team in the East at their home on the road, and the it just time. won't go well. Um. So. No, I, I, oh, sorry. I, 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 that's <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Uh, I was gonna. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I was gonna say to answer your question. I didn't really answer it. Um, I would almost have to agree. If we go, I believe we're seven, four, and seven record-wise right now. And if we manage mm-hmm. to dip two games below that five hundred mark, I don't, I don't see it going well for Oscar. And it's, it's unfortunate because he's got us to where we are. Like last year was probably two, no, two years ago was probably our peak. Um, so it's yeah. sad to see the guy that got us there have to go but it's it's just not looking good yeah i mean and two years ago we had uh nani who was looking really good mueller who was putting up some good some good uh possessional points whenever he was able to get on the field um this and last year obviously it went down and this year it seems to the disparity makes no sense we're either we're flying or we're not uh but i have to imagine the conversation I don't. I mean, I don't know how clubs work, but I have to imagine the conversation's already been put down. Win the Open Cup. Just it's two wins and Champions League football. Like it's a no-brainer, right? Like if you're the club, if you're making those decisions. Yeah, it's, I think that's kind of where the fan base is too, because you see everybody kind of saying, like I just said, Open Cup or bust. That's we want a trophy. Open Cup or bust. We want to win that well, trophy absolutely. and finally be there. That's, I just don't see it 100%. going anywhere I, yeah, else. I, I completely agree. Like the amount of times last night for fan reactions, we've we've heard people come up and say, it's all right because we're going to win the Open Cup. So it's kind of like already put out in the fan base that this is this is what we want right now. We see the, the form right now in the MLS may not be there. So we are currently focused on the U.S. Open Cup. Yeah. All right. I'm hoping you don't disagree with that. You, you definitely won the trophy. And and maybe finish I mean, I low playoffs. Trophy. I mean, the, the Open Cup is a special tournament. Um, the fact that 
it's the USL divisions and MLS and it's all this sort of stuff like, you know, knock on wood, like how cool would it be to have Sacramento against Orlando in a final sort of the, the, the past Kings of USL against these, you know, younger, you know, teams coming up in USL, but obviously a trophy is a trophy and you can only go up to the trophy cabinet in the stadium and just notice that the blank space between the last trophy is just getting longer. And what are we doing to, to fix that situation? I think you, you saw the start of that when we had the whole front office rotation. Um, mm-hmm. And then you see all this money come in. You're like, all right, we're on the way. Um, we, we say we're the soccer kings of the Southeast. And uh, like, I hate Atlanta, but they have the investment of Arthur Blank. So they have all that money just being thrown at them willy-nilly. And no matter how much we don't yeah. like it, and they haven't been good the past two or three years, two years, like they're going to start winning again eventually. Mm-hmm. With the amount of money they have invested in there, it's like Newcastle. Newcastle is going to be a, a top six yeah. team in the next two or three years in the Prem just because of the amount of money they have been flushed into that club. Um, and is, if that's where the MLS is going to go and then the salary cap either – keeps raising or we get rid of it event rid of it eventually we don't want to be caught out as one of those teams that's not investing instead of investing the money and hoping that we get reimbursed with trophies or um yeah just winning those winning competitions and getting money back for that and i don't know i don't know all the owners net worth mm-hmm. and all of that but i have to i'm pretty sure that orlando's one of the wealthiest right like our owner group i, I would imagine so is because they're all they also own the vikings so they can't be yeah poor. so i mean we're not hurting for cash and for all the things you can say about atlanta the one thing i'll never criticize them on is how they conduct themselves as a football team like the fan base is the fan base and that's its own thing like they didn't want to support the silverbacks they, did, they only want to support the shiny MLS team, and that's its own thing. But I can't be mad at them for how they've structured their team. They went in, put the money where it needed to be put, won their cup, and you know they're moving on. And now, yeah, they're struggling now, as you say, but I can't be mad at them for that because I want the same thing. <laughs> I want us to start opening the, the checkbook and writing these, these checks. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, you froze for for like a solid fifteen seconds. It, the last thing we heard was "open the checkbook." That's about That's it. About it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just open the checkbook. I I know I know Mark Wilf watches these, so let's go ahead and open the checkbook. Um, yeah, uh, if you ask any fan if they want, like if if you ask a fan and you said, "Do you want our club to be the highest spending in?" X league, whatever league, and they yeah. said no. There's at least seventy five percent of them this line because yeah, you don't want to say like you don't want to be like a Man City where it's like yeah, you bought the league, you you got all this or uh, Chelsea fan even you can make the argument for that too. Mm-hmm. But like, do you want success or do you want to watch your team just be finishing thirteenth, fourteenth in the league? Yeah, if you have the passion for it, you definitely like. I wouldn't be mad, but. If you want the success, and you can't deny that kind of thing. No, I mean, if you can, you can only play the game on the field to which you're given. And if we're given a field that is plumb full of cash trees, we'd be stupid to not be utilizing that money. It's different for teams like in the Premier League Southampton, where they might not have the same amount of resources, but they know their academy is going to bring them back like, Oh, we'll just have another Gareth Bale and sell him or FC Dallas where you build, you know, which is obviously an Oscar, you know, part of his history. And I know that Muzi and Ricardo are part of, you know, trying to build this central Florida system, but we have both. We have a good Academy, obviously. And then we have money. And you put them together. You can add into that living in Orlando. So it's like we're trying to recruit players, yeah. even not a, a youth, uh, a youth kid, because obviously he's already living around here. Like it shouldn't be a hard place to get someone either going along with a retirement league kind of thing, an older an older guy to come over here and be like, yeah, come retire in Orlando. Taxes aren't bad, blah blah blah. It's not New York. Um, 
or Atlanta. So money, youth, and you have all of Orlando to live in. I feel like we have a pretty yeah. decent uh, argument to be one of the top teams, but uh, it's uh, it's Orlando City Soccer Club, so you just got to roll with the punches. I mean, you just got to roll with it because you're right. Like, I can't imagine, you know, someone from like a top six European league saying, wow, so excited to be in Cincinnati. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Like, Didn't even like have the, the World Cup Skyline there. Chile, let's do this. Yeah. Like, no. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we continue to invest who we bring in. Like, I don't know if you saw what happened with Toronto today, but they have been doing business in the transfer market today. Yeah. They brought in Bernardeschi yeah. from Juve, and then they traded Pozuelo to uh, Outer Fort Lauderdale. Miami. And now they're trying to bring in yeah. Mark Anthony K from Colorado. So they're doing like a full go through and reset the squad kind of thing. Um, speaking of Pozuelo going to Miami, we play them on Saturday. We're only, what is Saturday, what is today? Yeah. Went, today's Tuesday. Tuesday. So we got five Tuesday. days. Um, we play them at 8 p.m. in Exploria. Last time we played them, it was the Open Cup thriller of a match um you have thoughts on that what do you think will happen do we do we play like we play in the mls or is this I an mean, open cup game kind of feel that's the thing is the 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 best problem to have as a team is not knowing how to lose so if we just get back to winning and just it becomes instinctual again I feel more confident going into Red Bull's Open Cup if we can line up some results. If we can win on Saturday, get a point away at Atlanta, you know, sort of roll those into each other, that's that's the key. I mean, you have to get back to winning ways. You know, we kind of, we've been looking mediocre. And Miami is no better at that. Miami is subpar most of the time. But then you look at their squad and you're like, it shouldn't be like you have players a b c d who should be winning you games and they never do except for one time when higuain shows up and does something ridiculous right so i'm confident we can win the game but it's how we feel i don't i don't i don't know when miami's last game was either uh let's see you give your little check thoughts stats. check the stats <laughs> always got to go back to it Oh, I mean, sorry. They played yesterday. Okay. They played Dallas to a one-one draw in Dallas. Oh, great! Okay. Dallas okay. scored in the twenty-seventh, and then Campania scored in the eighty-ninth to level it. I mean, he's a great player, Campania. I mean, he's you can't fault players better than uh, Higuain for being good. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta put "Do Not Disturb." <laughs> 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 Was so loud. <laughs> Once again, if you're just joining us, OC Fan TV is a classy <laughs> joint. That's why I wore my best polo. Only the, the top <laughs> and, notch. Uh, <laughs> our special guest. You have to have that happen. <laughs> Welcome to it. No, 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 not not special. But could you imagine if, like, have you done the Kyle Smith no. interview yet? Yeah, just do that. Yeah, just do that <laughs> for him. See what. <laughs> yeah, you better <laughs> silence uh, everything. Yeah. We got some work to do. Um. I think that'll be good. I'm, I'm glad you guys are uh, not being afraid to at people on social media now. You're just going hey, after them. Why not? There's no no reason not to. Why not? Get the Pope next. Get the Pope Get, next. Uh, <laughs> it's a little controversial, isn't it? Ask him for his thoughts. Thoughts, thoughts. on Orlando City. He's a, fo- he's a football fan. <laughs> yeah, that's one way you want to put it. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. I cut you off because I, I found the end of score. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think... I'm pretty confident, like you said, going into this game. Um, last time we played against Miami, I thought we came out really well. We pressed well. Um, Higuain, he's just like a hippo out there watching him, so that's going to be fun to watch. Um, I think we should be able to get it done, but of course, you know, from last night's game, that's going to be lingering in the back of our minds, so I just hope that doesn't come back to bite us in the butt. Your thoughts? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, I don't think they start Higuain in this game. I think they only started because it was that Open Cup match. And then if – I mean, he scored – Campania scored in the 89th minute. Who knows if he came on or if he was playing on 90 minutes. But even if he was playing 90 minutes, I still think he comes on and starts on Saturday just because of how bad Higuain played against us last time because Robin just bullied yeah. that man. 
The only thing he could do was uh, him up. the little quick one touch passes. If he took more than one touch, he lost the ball. Um, so I don't if I'm pre- is Diego. No, it's not Diego Alonso. That was Phil Neville. Sorry, that's the coach. Um, is smart, then he starts Campania. No, you don't stop someone who's on a on a hot streak. You just don't take that away. Even if they're even if they're tired, you you continue to let them drain the tank. You don't stop it while it's still going. Yeah, I learned that the hard way at the roulette table this weekend. I stopped on a hot streak. So, um, oh. hey. Oh. Um, that was painful. Oh. Yeah, I think I'm still just kind of. You said we were decompressed. Um, after last night, I don't. I don't think I'm fully decompressed. That that game pissed me off. Um, I was going into it thinking it was an easy three points, and then uh, of course we conceded two in the first yeah. eight, and that conceding two in the first eight was just kind of a combined effort of the defense. Um, yeah, you got. You could say Kyle Smith didn't have the greatest night. You could say Pedro didn't have the greatest night. Um, but is there just something that we're lacking? And def- Antonio didn't start. No, it was Schlegel, Schlegel Smith, and Janssen, yeah. and Janssen, and Ruan. Ruan, yeah, yeah. Yeah. hurt. Martin, yeah. So, yeah. is it was that just a mix of being asleep and then only starting what half of our starting defense still missing Antonio Carlos, or is it just being fully asleep? It's. I, I have to imagine it's fully asleep. Like. You don't give up two goals that quick if you're organized and you're locked in and you're ready to go. Now, I don't know what contributes at that level. Like, I haven't coached at the MLS level. Um, but obviously, if you're caught out in the first minute or two, that's it's half because they did something right and half because you just were completely disorganized. Like... Uh, years ago, I mean, it's on the highlight reels, like Pato scoring that like second minute goal against Barcelona, or whatever it was, first minute goal. Is it just because Pato's so good that he can dribble all ten men in two thousand eight Barcelona, or is Barcelona just not ready? Uh, I would definitely have to go with that not being ready. I think we've played with we played with Schlegel in the back enough this season to where it's not a a falling asleep thing, um, and then we've also had Ruan and Kyle Smith out there because Joao hasn't either played or he's been hurt. So mm-hmm. it's not a there's no chemistry thing. It's an asleep thing. Um, it also could be a confidence thing. We've won now, aside from the Nashville match, um, we've won one, two games in our last 10, Jesus nine, 10 games. Um, so yeah. we're not in great form, so it could be asleep and just being a confidence thing because uh, we are just not very – uh, good right now, to say at least. And now that I look at it again, um, say the least, yeah. we also beat Miami on pens. But counting those two wins is gracious because they came on pens in the Open Cup. And even that, like look, that was still a come from behind both, yeah. too, right? Because like they went up in extra. Now time. both of yeah. our, uh, both of our last, two, both of our last two last. You're English right? is hard. Last. <laughs> Both of our, I can't even speak. All right, you know the what Miami ones and the Nashville ones have both been comeback wins. It's like Nashville fan TV. All right, yeah. That, both yeah, of our last two games Is have that? been both of those. Two, <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Uh, both of those games were come from behind wins. Yes. Good. And and in pens. Well done. Well said. Well said. That's gonna be a quote. Both no. What was it? And then Scott, the Nashville TV guy, started calling us <laughs> mayonnaise eaters. <laughs> Because we were making fun of the Nashville hot chicken. <laughs> uh, I didn't even say anything about the chicken. Now, why did I, why did I get shots thrown at me? Because you were behind the camera, and I said, I, I guarantee you he's not a mayonnaise eater. and Because I know you don't like mayonnaise, so it worked out. Do you like mayonnaise? Oh, hate stuff. Oh, Thank hate you. Stuff. All right, Thank so then you, Scott someone. is just wrong in saying that Florida people are mayonnaise eaters. No, I hate mayonnaise. No, I hate mayonnaise. I like spicy food, honestly. Quite honestly, I like. I well, like now that we've dumped Nashville out of the Open Cup, do you like Nashville hot chicken sandwiches? Oh, I love hot chicken. Are you kidding me? I think I've only had it <laughs> once, maybe twice. So I don't know to be honest. Well, it's very good. I uh, there's a bunch of places in Orlando I can recommend to you. Heard offline. I don't want to get free sponsorships. 
I mean, if you give them and then we contact them, it would be like 50 bucks right now. Maybe that'll work out for us <laughs> in our favor. Um, I'll give you 5% of that if you want. Oh, thank you. You're very gracious. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have any questions? Because I did not come prepared at all. I'm trying to figure out what else what else to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we do predicted 11 for the Miami game? Uh, let's do preferred 11. Well, yeah. We'll let preferred our, 11. Preferred 11. That's what we do. Um, In goal, yeah. I want Neuer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going to be working in the transfer window then. Heard the Wilfs are splashing the cash. Yeah, for um, an old goalkeeper. I don't, yeah, what is he, like 34 now? Something? I mean, I, yeah, older than he needs to be for us. Yeah, we're still going after a 33-year-old attacking mid. All right, Open Cup, not Open Cup, cash. MLS League play match against Miami on Saturday. Your preferred 11. Uh, Guy Essay. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's assuming Carlos can play. Be right back Ruan, Antonio Carlos, Janssen, and then Kyle Smith, because I'm assuming Zhao is out and or transferred and or stuck in traffic. Don't know. Don't care. Uh, If possible, I would like to have uh, Urso in the middle. If he's not hurt... As like, yeah, like sort of like as a CDM instead. Um, Because he's more... I don't want him anywhere near there. Um, Because then you can bring Cesar in as a sub if you need that extra bit of oomph to stop any sort of... Because I'm assuming we're winning this game. Um, Then I'm going to actually like screw up this midfield big time. Is I'm going to have Maurizio if he's not injured... Uh, because I saw he pulled up the hamstring uh, at the end of the game. Uh, and honestly, I'm going to put Pato in the midfield. Because he's actually pretty good at distributing. And he can also be not quite a false nine, but he can interchange with Kara, who's going to be at number nine, and then Facundo and Benji. I'm not putting Tesho up. So it's a 4-3-3 that really transforms into a 4-2-4. If Pato goes up, but he can still recess into the third, the three. So the one problem slash question that I have for that is you're going to have Maurizio, Pato, and Facundo all in the middle of the pitch because Facundo just goes straight to the middle. Is that going to clog up our play even more? Or does Pato move up into that second striker if Facundo comes in? Well, this is where sort of like the tactical analysis of... So if you know Facundo is going to come in, you then leave this lane for hopefully Ruan to get his shit together. So that way you can interchange here and then put the ball back into this channel to get crosses in. But it's because Facundo, Maurizio, and Pato, all very good, one touch, tiki-taka, boom, boom, boom. But the final third is what's lacking. And statistically, if we can just get more crosses in, you'd assume something would happen. And so if you can overload the middle and free up the outside, that would be my hope. Yeah, that's that's what we try to do basically the whole season, if, especially if we play Facundo on the right and bring him in, then it's mm-hmm. Ruan's free on the right. But Ruan's final cross absolutely is horrible, even when he's in space nothing nothing hits it's either no. straight to the first defender or out of bounds behind the goal or miles away dude he had one last night he comes down lifts his head up picks out this beautiful pass to nobody in the like at the <laughs> penalty spot like legitimately no one was there someone should maybe be there yeah but it was a yeah. beautiful pass to nobody well, that's, and uh, Keep going, yeah. <laughs> so the the one time he has a good cross, we just don't have people in the the right areas. Correct. <laughs> Beautiful sentiment right there, but it's, it, it's been a reoccurring theme this season where the final pass just hasn't been there, especially oh, yeah. from Ruan off the right side. Yeah, that's. And I was gonna. No, go ahead. I was gonna say it's difficult because, like, in your head, 
you still you're like, oh, remember when Ruan used to interchange with Mueller and they would attack together and it was like this like one two double punch like we would just crush teams and now he's just it's just not there's a disconnect. The FIFA Ultimate Team is not working. It's not gelling together. There is no green chemistry line links in there at all. No, he's got um, the right wing back playing in the right back position. Maybe. Yeah. Um, you bringing up Chris Mueller and Ruan attacking together again. It like the first thing that I could picture was Ruan right on the goal line, and all he would do was mm-hmm. have to slot a ball straight across the box, always, mostly on the ground, because mm-hmm. and that's what he would do. Yeah. But now he's being asked to put in a cross from outside the 18, which apparently, God forbid, he has to put on a platter for somebody. Because as a professional footballer, I think, especially where he's making his money doing that, um, yeah, he should be able to do that. But we're just not seeing him have that quality. Don't know if it's muscle memory of him just speed so many years on the goal line and just trying to slot a ball across. But I feel like you should have that uh, that quality to be able to put in a cross. No, a, f- a footballer at that level, they should be able to look with their head, see what the options are, and make that decision. And I'm sure at practice that's what they're working on because he's not going to be in those positions time and time and time again if that's not part of the game plan. So is he just not finishing it in practice? I don't know. I don't go to the training ground every day. Uh, <laughs> so I can't tell you if that's what's happening with him either. But it's it's concerning that you can you can see everyone can see where the where the plan is working and it's beautiful and then it buffers at eighty five percent and then we lose internet and it's like what happened? Yeah, between the crosses not going in and then cars finishing being fifty fifty most of the time, it's not the greatest mix. Like I said, it's just inconsistency mixed with inconsistency. Was that a goal last night with Kara? Yes. Or was that a foul yeah. on the keeper? You think it was a goal? Uh, being biased, yes. Foul. So I'm trying. I haven't even gone back and watched the highlights yet because I've been too. That's okay. Black. When you have time, we'll go ahead and we'll edit this out. And then <laughs> here we go. Yeah. Okay. So it was, it was what I'm deflected off of someone. Too. <laughs> go for it if you want to. We need one. I want clip art. <laughs> <laughs> you want Pitbull and Will Smith coming up again? Yeah, yeah. But I want people to hear it on the podcast. Okay. Okay. Um, it's an audio adventure. Yeah. We got a... What was, it, was it last night that you were like, hmm, is the microphone working this time? Or was that two nights ago? Or two games ago? I think ago? that was Nashville, yeah. Right. I don't even remember last night, man. Last night was just so garbage. Yeah. I, I don't even remember last night at this point. Because, um, like, we had the TIFO we had to deal with. Yeah. And then you had the game. And then the drive home. And just, like... You have to sit in your thoughts for a long time. Yeah, you got the longer drive home, definitely out of all three of us right here. Yeah. So that kind of sucks ass for you right there. That happens, but I also live on the beach, so suck it, I guess. <laughs> With respect. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I can't argue against that. Uh, Dream transfer. Who would you bring in this window? Dream transfer. Position or player name? Just like totally out of the reach, or does it have to be like in reach? I mean, you could do both. You could do left back, and you're like, I legitimately think we could get this. Uh, if, if possible, I'd like to go back in time and get Ashley Cole. Like, <laughs> um, for some reason, the first name that pops <clears throat> into my mind as a Chelsea fan is Ross Barkley. He is in Premier League quality as an attacking mid, but you we want do Ross need the another boss. attacking mid. Uh, apparently, I do because that's what popped into my head. Um, then you said left back, and I was like, "Well, if Joao's on his way out, uh, way out, way out, we definitely need another left back." But at the same time, we also need another Cam. So it's either one of them. Um, and I, without Joao, we can still defend, but without Mauricio, we can't attack. So I think that takes a little bit of the priority. Um, mm-hmm. And I would go Ross Barkley because it's actually semi-realistic and. Uh, we need it. It's not outside the realm of possibility. I mean, Ross Barkley is 100% a fringe player for Chelsea. He can barely get a match. Um, and when he does, he he's a bit part player. Plays maybe 20, 10, 20 minutes, 10 minutes. But he's out of the team for sure. For sure. Yeah. 
yours? Well, that was nice that you kept it realistic, but I'm going to go completely unrealistic, needing that we we really need a left back because I'm not 100% confident in Kyle Smith out left. I love him out right, but it's just for yeah, some yeah. reason out left, he's not the same player. So I'm going to be completely unrealistic and say we sign Alfonso Davies. <laughs> okay. Out of Vancouver. Okay. Out of Vancouver? <laughs> Out of by way of Bayern Munich. By way of okay, I was gonna say you went back. Did you go back in time to get him out of Vancouver? <laughs> uh, I thought about it, but I think post injury we get a good uh, we get a good fee for him. We'll bring it down to maybe like five million, five mil sounds about right. Yeah. But do we do but, we have a DP spot left open? Uh, as of right now, I don't think so. Because it's Damn. didn't Pato no. Mm. Car is a DP. Well, Mauricio Pato's, is a DP. Pato's and Pato's, Pato's no, Pato's not a DP, is he? No, he's Pato is definitely not a DP. He's like on two hundred thousand a year. Um, heard the maybe Facundo is a U twenty two initiative. Yeah. Um. I don't know. To be honest with you, we'll have to double check that. We'll double check that. Leave a comment below. Comment below. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's gonna take too long to find. All right, your not a dream signing. <clears throat> oh man. Oh, man. I'm going to go realistic instead of dream. Realistic. Realistic. But you but inspired you me inspired with a me thought, thought of, of what does this what league does like? This league like? It, likes it likes old players, old players with trophies, trophies that, mm-hmm. still that still have like two, two or three years, years of skin, years of skin left, on their left on their belts before they're yeah. absolutely yeah. dust. <laughs> That's why so that's Orlando why City. Will be signing Cesar Aspilicueta. That was my second thought. And he'll be going to. <laughs> we'll keep with the Chelsea <laughs> theme. I think Aspilicueta would bring not just I think at this level. Like I just think he's got some gas to tank. Anyone who's still rumored yeah. to go to Barcelona at his age still has it. But also similar to the way not like Nani, it was in his DNA to just win. And that's what Aspilicueta would, would, would bring, is you need someone you need in this someone team, in this team that's, like, that's like, you're training at this, level, training at this level, but if you want the silverware, it's got to be here. And you can never coach that. You can only learn it through experience. And you need someone like that to come in and sort of grab the boys and say, it's not good enough. You know, Nani, for better or for worse, was doing it, more or less. Not winning trophies, but... But it's a guy that knows how to win, yeah. And even then, uh, he could not even left back. He could go into that right back spot if Ruan can't. He can do be both, clinical yeah. up front. He's played that right wing back spot for Chelsea, and even in the attacking third, we see him score goals more than Lukaku. So we could still see him score more than Kara or put in good crosses in the box. So absolutely, I, that wouldn't really be a terrible, terrible option. No, I mean, again, he fits the profile. You can say, oh, Champions League winner, you know, FIFA World Cup winner, because I know MLS loves that garbage, you know. It could, it, could, it could literally be Anderson from 2008 Manchester United, and they'd say, this is one of the top players in the world. It's Anderson. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's not completely unrealistic from MLS. No. And then you'll have people say, just like Schweinsteiger, wow, are you going to bring the World Cup to Chicago? Because no one cares about this sport here. So, I know Don Garber listens to this too, so shout out to Don Garber. Don't tell him your viewership now. Come on. 40,000. 40,000. There you go. A day. Um, that'd be nice. Then uh, we didn't even get to our lineups. I think we're going to leave our lineups for the Instagram post later in the week. Glad we got yours. Um, but <laughs> we will give the score predictions here on the podcast. So if you want to hit yours first, um, yeah, I'd be uh, uh, English is hard. I'd, I'd love to hear it is what I'm trying. Yeah, so first minute, Miami goes up 1-0. Uh, <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Listen, and then the crowd is going to get absolutely rabid, and we're going to come back and win 3-1 in the second half, not even the first half. So it's going to be a depressed first half. Second half is going to be something else. It's the Orlando City way. (laughs) 
Never give the fans what they ask for. Yeah, whether yeah. that's three points against the easiest team in the league or just a non-stressful day, that would be nice. Nope, it's going to be a late Saturday, so strap in, boys and girls. Yeah, a little after 8 o'clock kick, a rivalry game. It's going to be something. Um, with our recent form, I think it's going to be like a maybe another 1-1 draw. Neither of us are really clinical, except for Campania mm-hmm. and then Kara inside the six. So maybe each of us were lucky enough to get a goal because um, it took 94 and 97 minutes for each of us to score against each other in the Open mm-hmm. Cup. So I, it could totally change around. It could be like 3-3, three, three, great game. But I, I, knowing my luck, that'll probably happen. But also knowing Orlando City and outer Fort Lauderdale right now, I can't see us scoring a lot. And you? Fair enough. Um, I'm going to continue on the uh, we concede notion. I'm going to go 2-1 Orlando City. <clears throat> I think we'll we'll go down relatively early, but I think we'll start clawing back midway through the second half, and I think we'll grab a late winner. That's, I think that's fair. That's my prediction. Still sticking with the Cardiac Cats. Both of you kind of him more Cardiac Cats. but So 1-1. One, one. Two one, and then four one. Three, four one. Four upgraded from four. three. Yeah, four one. You said three one the first time. Sorry, I added one more. Four one. Oh, <laughs> heard. All right. So I'm saying we're not going to score. I got to sit with it, and I realized that three didn't feel good. So you you're going with the team that can barely score with four goals. It'd be nice. To Listen. Sometimes <laughs> the. Sp- League makes no sense. Uh, yeah, as we case just figured point, out last night. Case in point, 24 hours ago as yeah. we record this. <laughs> so I if you told me disagree. that Orlando would win 4-1 on Saturday, I'd say, yeah. If you told me I'd lose 4-1 on Saturday, I'd say, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's one of the more unpredictable leagues in the world. You're not going to go into it like Man City against Norwich, knowing they're going to win like 5-0. Anything can really happen with any team. And yeah, we were on the spanked by, by Manchester City. Uh huh. I said, yeah, like, you're right. Like, Norwich would would get smacked, but, like, you don't know. It's like this whole, like, garbage any given Sunday mentality that's in this country. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we appreciate you for coming on the podcast. It's been a long time coming. Um, we yes. hope to see you. Well, well, we won't see you at the watch party because you'll be in Atlanta, but we hope to see the rest of you at the watch party July 17th. Um, at Tin Roof on I Drive, uh, you have anything that you want to shout out before we head out for the night? What is Tin Roof? What kind of food do they have? They have everything. Last time I was there, they I ate nachos, burgers, fries, good, um, very good pulled pork sandwich. There you go, very good pork. food. Um, is so, it good yeah. for the kids? There will the kids will be allowed. It is usually a twenty-one plus uh, venue. But we get it opened up for the families uh, during our Orlando City watch parties. And it is only a 3 o'clock kick, so you have time. 5 o'clock, game should be ending. You still got time to get home and, and wind down and have a good night. Or stay and have an even better night. That's good. Um, the, only thing, uh, the only thing I could possibly shout out is obviously uh, we are home this Saturday. So if you are in downtown and you're looking to tailgate... Uh, the Iron Lion Firm tailgate is open to any and all customers. We have food, drinks, the whole shebang. It's right on Central next to the fan zone. Can't miss it. It's the, uh, it has the ILF flags. It's a real joy. It's a real treat. All ages. It's got great times for all. Well, there we go. Hopefully the match on Saturday is going to be a great time for all, except for the outdoor for a lot of the people that travel and even the... Uh, <laughs> even the ones that don't travel um, I think that about sums up the podcast and how we do things around here so uh, we thank you once again for coming on Logan fan, fan reactions and, uh, what about fan reactions are we doing fan reactions on Saturday what do you think I'm just making sure why don't you shout us out shout out fan reactions Saturday night come see us at gate C it'll be like 10pm but you know do it alright uh, thank you for coming on yet again. Uh, we apologize for the scuffness of the podcast, but uh, it was good talking to Peace you. Peace and, and love. We'll see you Saturday. See you then. Mm-hmm.